Hi, welcome to Price Crafty Creations. Thanks for taking time out of your day to hang out, chit chat, craft, and create with me. As you can see, my desk is full of little lovelies, and I thought I would share them and how I created them. They are similar to these gorgeous little guys with their little um, daisies and stuff. And I did daisies on every one of the bunnies. So I have it in the yellow and then that blue. And they're polka dots. They kind of like resemble peeps. So that's what I was going for for like Easter. Are they adorable? Cute little embroidery design on there. And it's just basic stitches. So I thought I would share how I do the daisies today, but um, share these as well. These are just some little scraps that I had that I was playing around with. So I took um, some scraps and just did some little and basic embroidery stitches on here. Really cute. Um, that one's like a green feather. And then some flowers. And then these are all the daisy type flowers same pattern used for each of them this one I did multicolored and this one is just basic and then I have some purple and some mixed and these ones are my favorites with that purple color on there really pretty and then this blue one I love the dark with that um, the yellow daisies on there and then these are the very first ones they did, so they're not as puffed up as the rest of them. As you can see, they are a little bit skinnier. Love that one with the different colors, too. So I wanted to see if you could stamp on them, and they worked really well. So I used two different, uh, sorry, three different stamps. I used this one here, that one, and then that one. So this one here, I did two different ways, and that's the results for that. I did the gold on this one, and then I did straight stitches on all of these. So that's the gold, and then I outlined just the top one on that one. And then the leaf one here, all I did was go over the outline. So this is what it looked like when I stamped it, and that's what they turned out like really beautifully like embroidered I think they look really pretty on that background and then so that is that one and then this is the the bloom one I love this stamp so that's this one and I did just the edging on this and then the way I did it is like this straight stitches again and then I just used back and forth stitches here for that center. So this is this is the stamp. This is what it looked like when I stamped it on. And this is the finished. I should have probably done one color. I used that palette one. And the ink dried beautifully on there. It says it's great for fabric. All paper surfaces use heat set on glass and fabric and I just let it set and it, it dried beautifully worked really well on there so I'm just gonna do the basic daisy one and I have my colors all set to go and I thought that it would be really pretty um, let me find one of the daisies again I should have kept it aside so I'm just gonna do the basic daisy stitch for you today and I always start um, by putting my thread onto my needles first and then deciding which side I'm going to use for it. And I really like the way the white pops on the orange, but it looks pretty on that too. But I want to use the orange for that. So I'm going to bring you down a little bit closer so that you can see it. There we go. That's a little bit closer. So I'm starting with, it's quite long. I think it is like 48 inches 52 inches for my thread and I start at the bottom and I like to start at the bottom because it gives me an idea of where I'm gonna go with it and I love to do the curved look like I did on these how it curves with the body of the bunny like this one here how it curves with that body so I like to do that with these as well 
So I've got my first stitch and I always start from the back so that it has that knot in the back. And I always leave it down for this part here. And then I decide where I'm going to go with it. You can draw it out. You don't have to. But you can. So I'm just doing a basic, I think it's called like a running stitch for this part. And you got to be careful on your back. You want to go slow and steady. And then I'm going to just tuck it right inside that other stitch there. And this is going to be the start of my base for my flowers. And I'm just going to go back and forth, deciding where I'm going to put it and how it's going to flow. And I decide along the way how I want it to look. I don't usually draw these out. Now, it's the using the stamps, I did the same thing. I went back and forth causing that beautiful like running I think it's a running stitch I don't know them exactly by name I just have always done my own thing when it comes to the embroidery going in and out stitches basic stitches and stuff all right so I have that and now I'm gonna have a flower here at the top but I want to go back a little bit so I'm gonna come over down about here so I want to take my thread and I'm going to go a little bit down in the back just to bring it back in so it's not so messy on the back and then go off on the side just like that and tuck that same stitch right into that little braided look right there and then do a couple of those outward. And I'm just doing that basic like running, I think it's called a running stitch, I'm not sure. If you do embroidery and you know, go ahead and comment down below what this stitch is actually called. So we have that, and now I want to do a couple of leaves off on the side. So I'm coming down here without doing that other stitch in the back and going right into it. And I'm going to do that a couple of times and come right up into that same spot that we just went under just to bulk it up so it looks like leaves. And then we'll go over here and do the same thing. So we're just going to bulk it up in there as well. And I'm only doing two stitches so that there's not a lot in there. So just like that. And that's the basic. Now to finish it, I cut a little bit off here. And then I do that square knot to hold it in place. So for square knots, I just grab it and flop it back and forth over each other like that. And then swap hands and do the same thing. And I know it was an excess, but I can use the rest of this for paper crafting. That little bit there. So we'll set that aside. And then we're going to tuck this piece up like that. And just give it a couple of pushes and it stays in place like that. So we're done with the green. Now I'm going to come in with my white. And I think I have the same amount. Yeah, 52 inches for my white double stranded this one was done with the single strand and this one was done with a single strand but I wanted to show you um, a double strand so I start in the very center of that leaf though not the leaf but the greenery there and work my way out and it's kind of gonna give me that look for the one that's hanging on the side because it's kind of drooping just like that and I work back and forth again using that basic stitch so that gives us three petals and we want to give a couple more here onto the side so we have four and I'm going right into that same spot in the center 
And we want one more here, but let's make it a little bit longer. And then we're going right back into that. Just like that. So that's going to give us that little bit of there. And up here, we want to start on the outside. Because we're going to create that flower there. But you want to make sure you're pulling tight enough that it's um, on the back. So you're not having extra loops and then we're not going to go straight into that center you want to create a petal and you're just basically doing a kind of like a blind circle in the center for your flower and you're just working up to the same length on your first set of petals this works for most flowers so you can change up your colors you don't necessarily have to do the white and just pretend there's like a, a circle there in the center just like that So we have the basic shape of our flower. Now we're just gonna build our petals around it. So we're kind of gonna make the next round just a little bit longer. So you're gonna go out just a little bit more than what you already have there. And this is gonna give that shape of a beautiful looking daisy type flower. Because not all the petals are perfectly the same size on a daisy, I've noticed. And just back and forth again. One last stitch here. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Okay, so we're going to do the square knot on this one as well. It's a simple little square knot. And then we're going to trim a little bit of that off. Save that. So we have the basic flower shape already. We're all done with that white. So now we're going to grab our yellow. And I don't have a lot of yellow on here. It's 38 inches. So we're just going to come up into the center of this flower here. Just like that. And we're just going to go back and forth till we color in that orange center there. Because we want it to be all yellow. So we have the center of our little daisy. I think one more stitch here will do that center. It does not take a lot of stitches to do the center of these. And there we have our little daisy. Isn't that pretty? And I'm going to trim that. And we're going to tuck and cut these as well like we did before. So I'm going to trim that excess off. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? Cute little egg. And grab the back. Just like that. Now we're going to fill it with some fiber fill. So I'm using the polyfill here. And you don't need a lot think about that much should fill it. I know it looks like that is not going to work, but I'm pretty sure that that amount will be really great. So I'm going to take my green again because I just think that will look really pretty for the trim. And we're just going to pull it. We're going to create a knot down here, right in that lovely little center, just like that. And we're going to start on the top layer because we're going to want to put that 
stitch right into that corner there just like that tuck everything in all the way around I'm gonna get any ends we have tucked in there and we're just gonna do a basic stitch around the outside kind of like I did the um, master board with the sewing technique it's the same stitch all the way around and I do want to thank Yvette Quail, I think it is, um, for that little tip on that again. Um, she had, I had won some that she had done, and they were my inspiration to do my own. So I want to thank her for that. And that was the inspiration to do these eggs as well. Just sew them up and around. And I just think they finish so beautifully. And you want to make sure that you're keeping this end closed together and that your back end is tight with that side as well when you're going through. And that you don't go too far with your stitches. You want to keep them a little close. Not so close that it's going to be like stitch, stitch, stitch all the way around. But you don't want to have too much space in between because with extra space it's gonna be like a scalloped edge and you don't really want a scalloped edge around there but you want to keep your thread straight as well because if you don't it's going to end up knotting and then you're going to have to oh I missed back here so I'm just gonna go back and do it So you don't want to have like a scallop look on here because it's going to look like it's unfinished. But you can fix it at the end. Like we'll come back here and we'll fix that at the end. Pretty sure we're going to have enough thread to do that. And you can see once you get into the sewing part of them, it does work up fast. It doesn't take that long to do them. So we're already at the part where we're going to fill, so we're going to put, tuck into that piece there because we want to have an opening. And then you're just going to take a little bit at a time, ball it up, grab each end of your felt and use your thumb and fingers to just push that fluff inside. And you want to get it all the way down and repeat that until you get it to the fluffy that you want. So I think we're pretty much there. We're gonna pull that little stitch again where we have that first one because we want that to be closed and I think I think that's good right there. So we're gonna try and push that down a little bit and we're gonna come back and get it fixed after so pull your stitch tight and kind of hold it together and work it back and forth again to get to that end and we're almost there when you come to the end, you want to make sure that that first stitch, that thread is inside. Because when you're going to close it, you're going to do a knot. So leave a little opening there and tuck your needle in and that's going to close that up. Wiggle your egg a little bit. This is going to help you see if you need to go back and fix any stitches or gaps. So that's going to fill in your egg. Now we can go back and fill in any stitches that need it before we cut. So you take your needle and you go in and work your way around that opening just like that and that's going to get you up to where you need it. Like right there we need another stitch because we didn't catch the front but we only caught the back. So we're going to place another stitch there and we're going to do that knot thing that we did before just like that and that's going to close that up and we need another stitch right here because it's quite the gap. Pull that tight. So the first time you do it, 
um, if you don't, if you pay attention to where you're stitching, you probably won't need to come back through and fix any stitches. I need one more there because that one popped out really good. And then to finish it off, you've got that one knot. You can either cut here or thread your needle again. And this is the fun part. Threading the needle is always fun. So you're just going to tuck that needle inside your stitch there. Right back in. Right inside. And then come up in the center of your egg and pull. And that's going to give that extra. Pull a little tight and then snip that as close to that belt as you can get. And there we go. We have a finished pretty egg that is similar to the bunny daisies. So that is my little tutorial for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.